Something magical was in the air of Montmartre in the late 19th century. As the city of Paris expanded, a bohemian vibe emanated from the area, attracting some of the greatest artists of all time, including Picasso, Van Gogh, and beyond. Today, Montmartre is one of Paris's most visited neighborhoods, if not for its charming hillside streets, then for its place in French history. The magic of the Belle Epoque may have faded, but you can still catch a glimpse of it if you walk in the footsteps of these great artists. Come along on a journey past places in this neighborhood that made history, and learn more about the time that great artists spent here. As a starting point, we find ourselves in the Place Emile Goudot, a cobbled square on a slope with a pleasant collection of trees and scattered benches. But we've come here for something more important. Aside from the unusual protrusion sprouting from its roof, the one-story building at 13 Rue Ravignon may seem ordinary, but behind its nondescript exterior hides a spectacular history. Known as the Bateau Lavoir, or washroom boat, the edifice was built as a piano factory before becoming a squat house, inhabited by 20 artists at a time. Notable among residents was Pablo Picasso, who lived here in the early 1900s, where he painted his famous Demoiselle d'Avignon in 1907, an iconic early example of Cubist painting. Henri Matisse, Gertrude Stein, and other famous artists, actors, and art dealers frequented the spot, creating a hub of creativity in this hilly corner of Paris. As the neighborhood evolved and World War I came along, the artists started to desert the place for the Montparnasse neighborhood instead. In 1970, fire destroyed the building, but it was reconstructed several years later. As we leave the square, head northwest on the Rue d'Orchamp and follow up the narrow street until arriving at the Moulin de la Galette. If you haven't noticed it yet, look a little higher and see the windmill towering over a small restaurant. This is one of the two remaining windmills that once dotted the area when it was a rural village on the outskirts of Paris. For an idea of what it once looked like, you simply need to glance at Van Gogh's series of paintings of the windmill from 1886. Before it became an elegant restaurant, and after it was a windmill, the Moulin was a ganguette, a once popular type of outdoor tavern, depicted by Auguste Renoir in his painting The Bal du Moulin de la Galette. The Ganguette's hilltop location offered excellent views of the city, but later construction has now blocked the view. In an era before television or even radio, Ganguettes and their balls were popular forms of entertainment for the masses, but tastes eventually changed, and the Moulin became a restaurant. Next, we head to the Musée de Montmartre, where we find the garden where Renoir once painted La Balançoire, on the swing in what was once his garden, Suzanne Valadon, a model for the artist who eventually became a leading artist in her own right, also resided there, painting in the bright and airy atelier. As you pass through Renoir's gardens, make your way down the steps beside the Hôtel de Mar, which houses the museum. Before entering, peek over the wall for a view of the Montmartre vineyard, a rare sight in any modern metropolis. The building houses a museum recounting the neighborhood's transformation from a hillside village to the derelict shantytown of a growing city that would eventually absorb it into its urban landscape. Posters from Toulouse-Lautrec are on display, advertising the local cabaret, Le Chat Noir, now an iconic artwork. Other memorabilia from the cabaret is on display, like admission tickets and program leaflets. The museum also includes a host of artworks from artists who lived in the neighborhood, and paintings like Perce de Mine by Auguste Léon Villette. This painting, originally designed for the Chat Noir Cabaret, depicts the fleeting nature of the nightlife in Montmartre. The museum also hosts an excellent temporary exhibition space, which you will need to cross to visit the atelier. If you wish to stay longer, the lovely cafe and outdoor terrace are a pleasant place to spend an afternoon in Montmartre. The Musée de Montmartre is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., with longer hours in the summer. A ticket costs 15 euros, including entry to the Montmartre Museum, the temporary exhibition, the atelier space, and access to the gardens, making it money well spent. Students under 25 can access the museum for 10 euros. The Abbesse metro stop on line 12 is the closest to our starting point. 
but you could also exit line 2 at Pigalle and walk uphill. But be especially aware of pickpockets and scammers, with fake petitions, friendship bracelets, or other ruses to distract you. The allegorical nature of Villette's painting illustrates the magic of the ganguettes, cabarets, and theaters, which once created a thriving cultural scene in Montmartre. While the neighborhood still possesses an unmistakable charm, the bustling activity of artists and locals has largely been superseded by tourists. But perhaps by walking in the footsteps of great artists, you can still experience a glimpse of the magic of Montmartre. 